with that dead SOB, did you? She said, I swore on his Bible that I would give him all that money if he died, and I did. And then she leaned very close and whispered in her ear, I wrote him a check. <laughs> and that's kind of what it felt like when we uh, managed to get Dan's estate divide it up and avoid the estate taxes. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not opposed to the paying of taxes, and I believe that those of us with more who are blessed in this fashion have an obligation to carry a greater load of paying the costs of government and infrastructure and caring for the needy and education and all of those things that our tax dollars go to. But I have to say... that I share Nelson Mandela's view that education is the most powerful weapon that we have to change the world. And so I also say I would much rather see that money go to education than to the building of bombs and missiles. Today, the E.H. and M.E. Bowerman Fund, which is dedicated strictly to educational projects, about half of the revenue that's generated by the very successful investment process that OCF conducts goes directly to scholarships to graduates from Wheeler County High School and to Toledo. The other half I get to help direct to a variety of things, and we have funded a great number of things, many of which I think would be near and dear to the hearts of my Aunt Beth, because it was she who gave me my first three bluegrass musical instruments, a very elegant, hundred-year-old Martin guitar, a cute little tenor banjo that she played in the classroom, and a nearly 200-year-old fiddle that had belonged to her grandfather, my great-grandfather, and that he had played in Fossil. And so one of the things that we have gotten to do is to support music education throughout the state, including the Cascade Community School of Music in Bend, the Ethos Music Program here in Portland, Acoustic Sound that does the big bluegrass festival in Seattle every year, and any number of other projects, including the composition of a 20-minute orchestral piece that was titled Man of Oregon. Some of you may have gotten to hear it performed in Eugene. And one of the most fun things for me has been to support the incomparable Chick Rose, who has been a mentor to hundreds of young bluegrass musicians around the Northwest. And when Greg asked me if I would do this with you today, he also asked whether we might be able to have some music from the Bluegrass Festival in, in Fossil that Aunt Beth's fund gets to help put on every year. So I called my friend Chick Rose. Actually, I emailed Chick. And very uncharacteristically, I didn't hear from him. Several weeks went by, and then I got word that Chick was in the hospital and not expected to survive. And in fact, two days later, he died. Some of his young musicians had said they wanted to carry on Chick's legacy, and it had been my hope that we would have them here on the stage. Unfortunately, this has been a very hard time for them, and they didn't make it. But I do want to close my presentation with a song that I was going to do with them, something that I wrote several years ago at the conclusion of the Wheeler County Bluegrass Festival, when I got up early the next morning thinking about how much fun it had been seeing these young musicians and how much they grew each year under Chick's tutelage. So I wrote a song called Small Country Towns, and I'm going to leave the podium now and walk over to the stage and close this out with a little song for you. Thank you.
I should tell you, before I start this, I'm playing an instrument that was made by my son, who's a luthier, has his own business now called Bowerman Guitars, but he worked for years for the Breedlove Guitar Company as well. And while he was there, he helped to set up another educational project that the EH and ME Bowerman Fund gets to support each year. And it's a, it's a workshop and a class that's conducted at the Sisters School District in which they teach young people there, especially at-risk youngsters, to build guitars. And that's been a really gratifying thing. So anyway, here we go. Thanks so much for listening. Small Country Towns, which is a bit of a message about their importance in this whole stewardship thing. One day I had gone at first light of dawn And I stood on a hill and looked down On the dusty rooftops of the houses and shops and the streets of a small country town small towns today are blowing away like bright colored leaves in the fall some can't be saved they've been bulldozed and paved buried beneath urban sprawl Oh, the experts have said the small towns are dead cause it's farming that kept them alive. But the global economy now sets the price so the small family farms can survive. When farming don't pay, the kids move and they go to the city, it seems In search of fast cars, fast women and bars Chasing impossible dreams The lessons we learned and the values returned Growing up in a small Whatever occurred, you stood by your word, and a friend would not let you down. So where will we be in this land of the free, if we let the small towns blow away? They still have a role there, the heart. Of this country. 